Good afternoon. Uh, hello and uh, welcome to the ARA webinar with representatives for the Responsible Ag Program. Today's Responsible Ag webinar will provide information on this voluntary federal regulatory compliance program and how ag retailers can benefit from its resources, training programs, and compliance assistance to make it easier for facilities to achieve a continuous improving safety commitment and achieve compliance. My name is Richard Gupton, Senior Vice President of Public Policy and Council with ARA, and I'll introduce our webinar speakers in just a bit, but first we'll go over a few housekeeping items. Again, thank you for taking time to be with us today. Webinar is an important part of the ARA professional development pathway and provide a great opportunity for ARA member companies to educate their employees. You can learn more about these programs at aradc.org under the professional development tab. Questions will be addressed at the end of the presentation, but you can type them in the Q&A or the chat panel at any time. Um, and I'd like to introduce our speakers. So uh, Tim McArdle is the industry liaison for Responsible Ag. Um, he's uh, sorry, in this role, he assists ag retailers in registering and applying Responsible Ag in their operations. Previously, he was corporate vice president of Brandt Consolidated in Springfield, Illinois, and general manager of the ag division of the company, having held the position since 2002. Tim is the past chair of ARA and the Responsible Ag Board of Directors. He grew up on a farm in southeast Alabama and received his MS from Auburn University. Pete Mutchler has spent 40 years working on environment and safety issues. His accomplishments have included creating an auditing and compliance consulting system for Farmers Union Central Exchange Cooperatives and overseeing compliance and environmental remediations for the retail side of what became Cenex and later CHS. He retired from there in 2019 as the Director of Safety and Environment for the Country Operations Division. Pete was an original member of the Responsible Ag Board of Directors and has taken part in many Responsible Ag audits. Today's webinar will be recorded and the recording will be need, uh, added to the members only section of the ARA website. As a reminder, you can log into the member only ARA dashboard to access past webinar recordings. And if you're not having a login, you can email info at ARADC.org to set one up. With that, um, I'm excited to hand this over to our speakers today, Tim McCardle and Pete Mutchler. And Tim, uh, on to you. Okay, thank you, Richard. I uh, appreciate uh, ARA uh, providing this opportunity for us to do a webinar about Responsible Ag. And you know, Responsible Ag has been around for 10 years. I hope that most of you listening or that will listen to this webinar are aware of Responsible Ag. But uh, we want to give you some information today, uh, update you on some information. So I'll start off by saying, who needs Responsible Ag? You know, we're, we're talking about the ag retail business or any ag-based business out here. Does your business have any of these? And you can look at those, and I'm sure all of you will say, uh, we got all of these or, or we got most of these uh, at any of our sites. So regulation is a fact of life in our business, uh, the ag retail business. We know that. We know that safety is paramount because of the operations that we do. We have our employees do. And we know that compliance is mandatory, that really it's not optional, and we have to find uh, ways to do it. In fact, your business is regulated by practically every agency, and keeping current is a challenge for everyone, both large and small. I've been there, done that, and, and I know it's a challenge. Uh, accidents uh, will happen. Uh, inspections will happen. But all of these can lead to fines and regulatory scrutiny of your whole operation. So, you know, we've got responsible ag um, is, is a help for uh, most of these things. And we kind of kind of want to go through that today and give you an idea of what we are and how we can help you in your business. So Richard, you can go to the next slide. What is responsible ag? So responsible ag was formed as a stewardship initiative by the Fertilizer Institute and the ARA back in 2014. Um, at that time, we recognized that, you know, there are lots of opportunities out here for, you know, EHS programs. Uh, there are consultants. There's, there's lots of things that you can do to comply and have the books on the shelf. But there really weren't any certification programs 
There's programs like Responsible Ag that let you know, yes, indeed, we've got all these elements in place and they work. So this nonprofit organization was put together with a board of volunteer leaders. And when I'm out talking to people, I like to say that Responsible Ag is all about by us, for us. These are us doing this for us um, out here. So it's led by your peers uh, that sit on the board of directors and make the decisions. Uh, participation is open to practically everyone in our business. It's designed specifically for retailers, but we have farmer members and we have fertilizer manufacturer terminals and distributors as well. And of course, this is a voluntary program. Nobody's forced to do anything here. This is something we should want to do to help our business be more in compliance and know where we stand at all times. You can go to the next slide. This is the mission statement. I always like to throw this up there because it kind of tells you in a nutshell, you know, what we're about trying to help ag retailers protect their employees, communities, and businesses. Uh, this is a comprehensive program uh, of auditing or assessments and education resources. And we certify compliance of all federal regulations. And, you know, you can read this for yourself, but that in a nutshell tells you what responsible ag is all about and kind of the things we're going to walk you through today that fill in the backbone to accomplish this mission statement. So you can go to the next slide. Members include thousands of businesses handling fertilizer, crop protection products, and other farm inputs. We have in excess of 2,500 members today. There's been over 5,000 audits done, you know, across, across the U.S. And so you are being in good company uh, when you join Responsible Ag, because many of the top 100 retailers are members of Responsible Ag and have found it to be uh, very useful in their business. Uh, what do we do? Um, just to reiterate, we're about achieving compliance with existing federal laws and regulations. We focus on the federal laws and regulations uh, that apply to ag retail businesses. And it's designed to identify areas of improvement. So, you know, when we do an assessment, uh, when you walk through your facility uh, with a responsible ag auditor, and you look at everything in your facility to make sure it's up to compliance and you find something that's not, uh, then we're going to provide you with information and support on, you know, how you can get that area into compliance in the most cost effective way for you. Uh, once we register a facility with Responsible Ag, then it, it lasts for three years. That registration is valid for three years. I mean, you know, you put that plaque on the wall and it stays there. And we only ask that after three years, you redo the register, you redo the uh, certification because as we all know, things change, you know, over time. So it's very simple. We're looking at how do we comply with federal regulations? So I put a slide in here. What are the steps to this? You register your facility. Responsible Ag is web enabled. Uh, we have a website. And there on the website, it's very easy to register a facility. You can then review the assessment checklist. We're going to talk in detail about the assessment checklist because that really is the heart and the backbone of Responsible Ag. A certified auditor. We're going to talk in detail about how do you become a certified auditor and where are these guys? And then your help, you, you walk through your facility. You guys have probably done this countless times. You conduct the assessment. You make sure that Everything that is a regulatory requirement throughout your facility is in place. And then that assessment is uploaded very securely uh, to Responsible Ag. Nobody else has access to it. And you get a very straightforward corrective action report, which is simply the things that you, you need to work on to get them into compliance. And oftentimes they're not big. It's a sign here. It's something here. Uh, that just needs to be in place so it doesn't catch attention uh, of an inspector. And then you, you complete those corrective actions and then you become Responsible Ag certified. Uh, most facilities that are Responsible Ag certified take great pride in this. 
because it's on a per facility basis. Uh, responsible ag is very flexible because all the elements are there and you may not have all the elements uh, at every uh, facility. Uh, you may only have certain things. For example, you know, you may have a facility that's got dry fertilizer and liquid fertilizer and chemical mixing, and you don't have any anhydrous ammonia tanks there. Well, that section of the assessment checklist wouldn't apply to you on that facility. But let's say you have a, an ammonia facility only out in the country, and that's all that's there. Well, then only the ammonia section of the assessment checklist would apply there. So it's very flexible. Uh, you can be utilized in many ways. Richard, you can go to the next slide. Here is kind of a, the assessment checklist uh, and break it down into the categories. As you can see currently, there's 467 questions there covering all of these things and covering all, covering all the agency questions across the spectrum of EPA, DOT, OSHA, Department of Homeland Securities, Anybody that touches your operations through regulation is covered in this assessment checklist. So it's very thorough. It's very straightforward. Uh, it's not difficult, but, it's, but, it, but it can help you to determine where you are. And I know a lot of guys, that's really what they want to know. Where am I at? Am I in compliance or not? And here's a tool for that. Go to the next. So now I'm going to turn... Uh, this over to Pete, and Pete's going to go through some of the real technical details about uh, auditing and assessments. Pete? Yeah, thank you, Tim. Um, I am really passionate about the the auditor side of this thing. Um, and, and getting back to that, the assessment checklist, it, it's designed to make the auditor's job um, easy, efficient. Uh, we don't want to waste a lot of time on this process. And so the, the, the checklist is organized in a manner that is facility driven. And um, that just helps the process so much. Auditors can be internal or external. Uh, internal meaning they can be an employee of the organization. Uh, external is you bring someone that has no affiliation with the organization and uh, uh, some companies use both. Um, in my, my past career, I, I like to use both internal and external auditors. Uh, I, I rotated them around, around facilities and uh, tried to make sure that I had a different auditor at uh, each facility when they came up with their, uh, their three-year renewal. I tried to make sure it was a different auditor than the first one that went through. But these auditors are some of the most dedicated environment and safety uh, people in the industry. They're passionate about doing things the right way. Uh, the checklist is a, a tool, the, the assessment checklist is a tool to to drive this contact with the facility but but auditors are there to do the right thing and 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 they work really hard to work with the facility op, uh, operation management in order to you know this de determine why they need to be doing this and uh um you know what's behind the regulation um one of the common uh, issues that I've had with uh, compliance audits in the past has been, you know, the auditors always looking for what they are interested in, and there's not a lot of consistency in 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 uh, audits and assessments. This process addresses that head on. Uh, the The checklist is basically the same uh, set of questions that every um, auditor will use during the assessments. And when they go through the audit training process, uh, the auditors are trained to be consistent. They are, they are trained to think uh, very much alike that this is, this is a process. It's not just, okay, we're going to audit our facility. Let's go and, and do whatever we want. This is a, a very uh, prescribed process and, and, and it helps. Uh, it, it helps keep us consistent and it makes sure we don't miss anything. And it also, you know, it, it, it emphasizes the important things uh, for our industry. And uh, what I found as an auditor, um, it, it helps with uh, everyone's understanding of why uh, things should be that way. Uh, why should we be, you know, 
wearing safety vest when we're exposed to traffic and, and, and things like that. Uh, next slide. Okay. The audit require uh, the auditor requirements. So when you come into this program as an auditor, and I'm looking at the list of participants, and I see that there's uh, some auditors and some potential auditors out there, um, we don't want just uh, you know anyone walk into this. So we're asking for some experience in order to become an auditor, minimum of five years experience working with uh, within agriculture. Uh, you, you need to know uh, what what a blender is. You need to know you know, what, uh, what an applicator is and, uh, you know, what the anhydrous ammonia tank is, uh, the purpose of that and some basic knowledge of, of what this equipment is. You, you need to know something about what you're working with. You also need to know something about the rules and regulations. And so we're asking for you know, five years of experience working with environment, health, uh, safety, security, loss control issues. Uh, yet the, uh, potential auditors need to have a working knowledge of OSHA, EPA, DOT, uh, Homeland Security. There is a lot of information within this audit program. There's a lot of help. There's a lot of uh, support for the auditors. But uh, having the basic knowledge of what these agencies, rules and regulations are is, um, is, is, is very important for the auditor to, to be able to execute this program. Um, must be physically capable to uh, get out and about, uh, climb, crawl, uh, get on top of trucks. Um, this is a hands-on program. This is not a sit in the office type program and fill out some paperwork. Uh, we do have it uh, organized. So you look at some paperwork and then you go out to the facility and you check a specific area. Um, it's uh, it, it, it's a it's a good program for those people that like some diversity in their day. And then you must have basic computer and Internet skills. It is a uh, computer based program. Uh, one of the, the, the benefits to this program is the turnaround is real quick. Uh, the person being uh, assessed gets the results very quick because the auditor has 24 hours to enter them into the computer system. Um, it's 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 simple to do once you get the hang of it. Uh, the way that uh, the program's organized, it it uh, you, you don't need to be a computer expert, but yeah, you, you, you need to be able to fill out an online form and and you're good. Uh, next slide. Okay, the auditor training program. Uh, one of the one of the most exciting things about this is the training is done at a um, a facility. Uh, it's hands on training. Uh, the Ford West Training Center in Owensboro, uh, Kentucky, um, was set up specifically for this purpose. It is a was uh, an active uh, egg retailer site. It had ammonia, it had dry fertilizer, liquid fertilizer, liquid pesticides, a shop, uh, chemical storage, package storage, warehouse. Uh, they've brought in a lot of equipment. They have scenarios set up in the facility, um, but it's got some additional things that uh, weren't a part of the uh, um, the egg retailer site, it's, and it, it's got a training center uh, built into it. Uh, one of the buildings there uh, in that picture is a computer lab uh, that 25 participants can sit down and boot up uh, the responsible egg website and support systems and the assessment itself. And uh, the training basically is split between going through documentation and the checklist and then going out into the facility and looking at actual scenarios. There are things wrong with the anhydrous ammonia plant there that the auditors need to find when they're going through the training. There's things wrong with the trucks parked on site. There's, uh, there, there's all sorts of scenarios and there's a lot of opportunities for the instructor to have a conversation uh, with the, uh, the auditors in the training and in order to understand, okay, what are we looking at? Why are we looking at it? How could this be looked at differently? Um, it's exciting training. 
Um, I'm thrilled because I get to uh, take over as the instructor uh, for the auditors this year. Um, I've been through the program a couple times. Uh, um, Brian Miller was just a phenomenal uh, instructor, so he's he set me up really good. And uh, we're going to start uh, the next round of training, auditor training, July 9th of this year. And so uh, it, it's going to be it's going to be a, a, a an a, a exciting um, new era in the program, and I'm really fired up for it. I've been doing uh, training for thirty some years, um, and uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. So I look forward to seeing uh, a, a good crew of future auditors coming through this next year. Next slide. Okay. Uh, one thing I did forget on that last side that the auditor training program, just full disclosure, uh, it, it, it cost uh, a little over $2,000 and that uh, that's a bargain for a week's worth of training hands on. Um, your auditors will walk away uh, really understanding this assessment and the assessment process is um, um, it, it, it's powerful. Um, it's a positive experience um, and as an auditor, I've really enjoyed uh, every audit that I've gone through because it's a positive experience. You're not just out there to say, I gotcha. You're out there to say, hey, here's what we're doing. Here's what we found that we can do better. Uh, here's why we need to do this. Here is, you know, here's the, the reasons behind uh, this regulation and it's there for a purpose. They all, you also, um, it, it's a credible process. You have a well-trained certified auditor coming in, whether it's internal or external, both are going to be uh, uh, monitored um, by the system. And there is a, a verification audit that, uh, that occurs at, I believe it's 10% of the, uh, the audits that are completed. And that's just to make sure that the auditors, you know, are fulfilling their, uh, their duties and they're doing it in the way that responsible leg had determined. And um, I, I will say that almost all of the verification audits have turned out positive. There've been a few areas that uh, we, we've needed to uh, make an adjustment or correction or, or help someone understand uh, the process a little bit better. But the, the system with its checks and balances is powerful. Um, the assessment is very efficient. Uh, it's like I said before, it's designed to be facility based. Uh, so you walk from um, area to area when you're doing uh, your checklist and you've got this checklist in your hand for that area. So your chemical warehouse will have a checklist that's specific for that area. You can stand, you know, kind of in the middle and look at the questions and, and look for uh, deficiencies all the way around. Then you get go back into uh, the office and look over the documentation that's required for that area. And then you move on to the next area. If you don't have um, liquid fertilizer at your facility, you just uh, uh, hit, a, hit a button in the computer program that says uh, not applicable and you don't, all those questions uh, disappear. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a really efficient program. I've done a lot of audits. I've used a lot of different systems. Uh, this is one of the most efficient ways to cover an egg retail facility I've ever worked with. And so um, I really like how it's set up. It's also, it, it's a fair system. Um, there's, you know, it's not based on the auditor's pet peeves or, you know, their, their specific interest. It's, you know, we're following what the industry and what the, the government agencies have said that we need to do. So um, also, you know, it, 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 it's a responsible thing to do. Um, I have yet to uh, run into a, any facility that I've audited that hasn't felt better about their operation when they're done and had more confidence when they're talking to their neighbors about how well their operation is, is run. Um, these days we talk a lot about sustainability. Well, you know, the assessment is, is a system that 
you can show that you're in compliance with the regulations today. You can show that you're in compliance with the regulations in three years ago, uh, in three years in the future. And it, it keeps going on. You, once you're in the program, you are a responsible egg retailer. So, um, and it's proven. Uh, there's been over uh, 5,000 completed assessments. And uh, each one of those has made a difference. There's been, you know, hundreds of thousands of items that have been um, identified and, and fixed and uh, nothing of big. Uh, next slide. I think that uh, shows, you know, these are the kind of things we're finding. These aren't, you know, things that will shut down an operation. Uh, the lockout, takeout, the annual review of the program. Um, it, it, it's, it's, Something that when you're busy, you might forget about. It's something that's uh, um, kind of a, a, a detail within the program, but it's it's something that's important. You got to make sure that your process is still there and your employees are aware of what the process is, making sure that you're not working on energized equipment so someone loses a finger or a hand or something. Um, my favorite one down here, and these are the top 10, by the way, um, most common uh, deficiencies found in the assessments. You know, number five, um, spare spare fuses in a truck. And not a lot of operations realize that, you know, that is a DOT requirement and and why? You know, it, it's just a list that most drivers see. Oh, I got to have my first aid kit. I got to have my fire extinguisher. I got to have my spare fuses. But when you start looking at you're driving down the road with a rig at night and you blow a fuse and you don't have any lights, uh, it makes sense that you should have spare fuses in there. And uh, so these these aren't huge things to do. I know a couple bucks for a package of spare fuses. You make sure that they're in a place where the drivers can find it, and um, and you move on. Um, most of the uh, uh, deficiencies that an auditor will find at a facility, you know, they're corrected within days of the facility getting uh, the uh, the assessment report, and so um, it's it's not you know, huge issues that are going to close down an operation. These are things that can be fixed, but sometimes are overlooked. Sometimes they're just, um, you know, we, we have a change in personnel. Someone was always checking the safety shower and now he's retired and uh, the new guys didn't quite get the message. And we want to get in there before OSHA comes in and says, yeah, you don't have your records on how often you looked at this, uh, this, the safety shower I wash here. So it, it, it's a positive program. It's, it, it's a, it's a really, um, uh, a feel good program. And, um, I'm proud to be a part of it. And I think uh, uh, anyone that, that gets in here, uh, I, I look forward to working all the way towards certification because once you get that, it's not just you saying you're doing the right thing. It's an organization that has the checks and balances and it's coming in and saying, responsible egg says you are doing the right thing. Next slide. Okay. And with this, I'm going to turn it right back to Tim because he's kind of a bottom line kind of individual. Well, thank you, uh, Pete. A uh, lot of good, excellent information there. Um, and um, I want to uh, point out a couple of things because I know that uh, some of you, I hope, that are listening to us today are, are new to Responsible Ag and we want to make sure that... Uh, that that you know one of those things is that uh you know pete talked a lot about the checklist uh we showed you the list of of uh, categories in the checklist and another thing that's very important about that checklist that on an annual basis it is reviewed by a team of experts uh look uh at all of those questions and make sure that if there has been any changes in regulatory issues uh, that they're added. You'll recall just a few years ago, um, the we had to add questions about the clearinghouse because DOT, uh, uh, the federal motor carriers added, you know, those questions about the clearinghouse, and how we utilize that in our business. So anytime anything like that changes, there's going to be some changes coming up with RMPs. And you can count on the fact that Responsible Ag will present to you something that's that's clean, 
new and up to date. And if it happens after your certification, you'll also get that information then and be able to add that to your own certification. So I just want to make sure I point that out. And also want to point out that, uh, that this internal and external auditors, um, you know, external auditors are, like Pete said, are professionals that have gone through the training and they're available to you to contract with, to do audits or assessments of your facility along with you. Internal auditors, as he said, are employees uh, that are uh, capable and have the credentials to become an, an, a certified auditor. And if you have a lot of sites, uh, that may be the way for you to go to, to have an internal auditor you know, of your own. So Responsible Act can work with you either way. Um, he pointed out, as this slide says, that uh, the program has led to a lot of issues being identified and fixed, and that uh, we're proving that uh, to everybody, all constituencies, employees, neighbors, communities, uh, that we are being responsible, you know, about what we're doing. And this helps you to, to do the right thing, uh, helps you to prove to the world around you that you are doing the right thing by becoming responsible ag certified. Uh, next slide. So uh, the other thing that's very important to you and it should be important to us all always is security and confidentiality. This is a, this is a part of our business that we want to be secure and confidential. So to reiterate, the audit findings are submitted through a secure online portal to Responsible Act where the audit findings are only shared with you and your designee. Uh, the information is never uh, shared with anyone else. And then you get that uh, corrective action report back to you indicating if there's any things that you need to be fixed. This is industry led. There's no regulators involved in the process. There's no posting to regulatory agencies. There's, there's none of that. So you can be assured that it's secure, confidential, and it's only between you and responsible ag. Next slide. So I, I, I go out, you know, my job and is to kind of go out and talk to people about responsible ag and kind of meet them where they are. And so obviously the lot of you guys out there have a, a program. You have employees that are on staff. Uh, you, you, you're trying to cover all your bases all the time. So you say, well, why, why do I need, uh, why should I earn responsible ag certification? And, and the answers to that question are pretty straightforward. Provides internal compliance validation. I think that if you're the professional who's responsible for this area of your business, this is a tool that can help you make sure that the program you've got in place is doing the work that you want it to do. It will validate that for you and you can make it flange right in with everything else you're doing. Uh, make sure your process is complete. Uh, avoid fines. I mean, like, like Pete said, if in the training facility, you know, that they cover everything that may be applicable to your facility. And of course, it demonstrates responsibility and transparency to I put to the board and the employees, the customers and communities, because all of these are your constituencies. And from my perspective, it's about protecting your assets and your business. We all want to run a safe shop. We want our employees to have a safe working environment and we want to protect our assets and our business so we can go about the job of doing business. Responsible Act helps you do that. Again, it's secure and, and confidential, prepares you for inspections. And from a real big picture perspective, it improves industry compliance and image for us all. Uh, the more of us that can say, yes, I'm responsible ag certified, the more we look like as an industry that we are indeed being responsible about compliance and we don't need further regulation. Next slide. So if you don't have an established program, and you know you're a smaller company and you wear a lot of hats, um, you may have somebody that handles operations and safety, and you may have somebody that handles something in the office and safety. It, it, it may be you. Uh, I've been in a situation where, where it was me. Um, you got a lot at stake. So again, it helps protect your employees, your assets, your business. Um, 
and it, the responsible ag assessment lets you know where you are, where you stand on compliance. Uh, and that is, that's a good thing to know right there. You know, gives you security and peace of mind just to know, okay, where am I? I thought I was in compliance or I didn't know if I was in compliance. And now I know. Uh, you get this access to these trained and certified auditors that are going to help you identify any areas that need improvement. They're going to do that with you in a secure, confidential way that helps you. And then again, uh, these assessment checklists are thorough, updated annually. The whole program is economical and very efficient, as Pete said. It's a very efficient process, and it helps you manage your time. As I said at the beginning of this webinar, this is mandatory. Others, you know, we don't have any wiggle room. We have to be in compliance. Responsible Act helps you manage your time, put your effort, and identify those items where you really need to spend your time and effort. Okay, next slide. So there's an intersection here, and I have this question put to me because a lot of you have uh, programs that you use to, uh, you got your RMP ebooks, you, you got your hazards, uh, hazardous uh, materials programs, and you say, well, what do I do? Is that responsible ag replace all that stuff? No, it does not. You still need to have those in place, and you still need to have your training programs in place. Responsible Ag certifies the value of this program. As we tried to point out today, it validates your compliance. So if you're fully in compliance, Responsible Ag validates that and, and helps you celebrate that by putting that plaque on the wall. If you're not fully in compliance, Responsible Ag helps you to come into compliance and then celebrate that and, and put that on the wall. It's a three-year audit cycle confirming compliance. I mean, you don't have to do it every year, uh, but every three years, you need to redo the uh, audit assessment and uh, put it back in place. And as I've said, this avoids fines and suspensions. It helps you run your business so you can run your business. And that's what Responsible Ag is all about. Okay, next slide. So what does it cost? Uh, you know, when... Responsible Ag was put together uh, by an industry coalition, as we said earlier. It, it, it is a uh, it's for us by us. You know, it was all about how can we make this a not for profit organization that can sustain itself and make this low cost for the users. So, manned retail sites, main locations, pay one hundred and fifty dollars. It hasn't changed since day one. It's a manageable per annual fee. And if you got an unmanned site out there, like I said, an ammonia terminal or a liquid storage terminal or dry fertilizer shed sits out there most of the year and you operate it in the fall or the spring at only $100. And then we do have manufacturers, producers, importers, wholesalers, distributors, brokers that are part and members of Responsible Ag. Uh, they're warehouses and sometimes they just want to support you because you are their customer and they want to support you by supporting Responsible Ag and they pay $5,000. But overall, the cost is low for the value received and uh, it remains that way, okay? So next we've got several slides here, uh, testimonials. Uh, people that have been involved in Responsible Ag have used Responsible Ag and we're just going to go through these, probably spend a few seconds on each one. And you can look at, uh, you can look at these, you know, some of these people, because these are some of the leaders in the industry uh, that are using responsible eggs very successfully uh, in their own program. Clark Capwell, um, you know, out there with McGregor. Next slide. Mac Tinsley, uh, Valley Ag, talks about how leadership and uh, it, it methodical guide, as Pete said, you know, it's a stepwise system. It leaves a little room for error, you know, and it's very objective. Next slide. Kent McPherson with Greenpoint Ag. 
it, it helped them set direction and make the, make safety a priority and put the processes in place. It's a large company, many locations, and they've used responsible ag to make sure that their locations uh, have remained in compliance. And I know I've heard Kent say that it's, it's given the people at the locations, you know, uh, a great deal of pride about it themselves. Tom Wynn with Premier Ag. I wanted to point this out. This is one of the things that uh, we don't talk about a lot. This this compliance assistance library. Uh, on once you become a member of Responsible Ag, on the Responsible Ag website, this compliance assistance library has quick lookup references to each one of those regulations that go with each one of those assessments questions. So it'll go right to the federal register notice for each one of those. You don't have to look them up. And not only does it go there, but it also gives you some compliance ideas about that particular item. So I found a lot of people find that's probably about as useful as anything just having access to the compliance assistance library. Next slide. Here again, uh, uh, John with the Tennessee Farmers uh, Co-op, establishing a culture of safety and uh, hundreds of regulations to comply to uh, each location. Uh, they got lots of locations and it's been very successful for them. So, in, as, as we get ready to, to get to the end of this, there, there's a couple of other things I wanted to say. I wanted to make sure that I pointed out to you the fact that uh, Pete mentioned the verification audit. Um, audits are pulled randomly for verification. You know, nobody comes back out to your site, but that whole audit has gone through to make sure that, uh, you know, it was done correctly the way it was supposed to be done. So you can have a high degree of confidence in what is going to take place with, with your responsible act certification. It's going to work for you. And you're going to have a whole team of people that, that are going to make sure it works for you. So uh, these are our uh, contact information here. Uh, I encourage you to go to the website, uh, look up some of this stuff for yourself. Uh, there's a help desk. Once you uh, get engaged with Responsible Ag, you can be assured that there's always going to be somebody there to answer your questions and, and help you through. And then, of course, you got me. And, uh, you know, I, I'm a guy who's willing to come out to your location. So, you know, don't hesitate to call me because if you'd like to have a sit down uh, with yourself and other management to talk about implementation of Responsible Ag, uh, I'm, I'm available and ready to, uh, to come out and talk to you and help you with that at any time. So uh, uh, we appreciate the fact that you've been with us today. And I'll uh, turn it back to Richard to see if there's any questions. Thank you, Tim and Pete. Uh, great presentation and uh, really great information about the importance of this program. I can tell you, on, from the policy front, Having a program like this, uh, first and foremost, in meeting with the lawmakers and the regulatory agencies, uh, it's a program to be proud of, and it and it helps in those conversations when we are talking about regulations that impact our industry. That we are being responsible, trying to be compliant with these with these issues, and even on that list that you showed, like a fire extinguisher, we've had recent stories about fires at at facilities making sure you have a, a fire extinguisher and, and process in place of the works that can help mitigate that uh, is very important. So um, if you have any questions, uh, please place those again in the Q&A function or the chat function. We did get a question about will the slide deck be shared with members, um, it, the, the, uh, which we can do with some of the attendees, I believe. And it should be posted, uh, the webinar itself posted later. Uh, on the ARA website under the members only section, as I mentioned, uh, but we can see about the, the slide deck as well for attendees. Um, I do have a question for for if so, for Pete, like if they do want to register for the auditor program and or find an auditor for one of their facilities, how do they go about doing that? 
Uh, that would be going to the Responsible Egg website. So that's that responsibleegg.org. And um, on there is uh, you, you basically you, you sign up as a as a participant. And, uh, you know, with that, um, it, once you once you join the program, you then uh, can go through that website. It's it, that website's kind of a, a one stop shopping center for this whole program. Um, you can see who the auditors are, who they're available. The auditors are uh, sorted by external, internal, and um, they're also uh, when you are going through the audit training program. Uh, you get to determine which areas you're willing to go to to audit. So as an external auditor, if I want to cover, you know, every part of the country, I will select every part of the country. If I just want to do Iowa, I can just select Iowa. And so uh, participants will be able to see that information, select the auditors and uh, and get their contact information from that. And, and, and let me add one thing to that, if I could. And that is because uh, I'm sure people have this question in their mind. It was left that way because the uh, selection of the auditor has to be a selection that's, number one, comfortable to you uh, as the person who's going to have this person come on your site. And number two, it is also a negotiation for the fee is between you and the auditor as well. Responsible Ag decided that it was easier to do that because, you know, you may have an auditor that lives a state away or you may have that lives two streets away. And so you, you got to figure out, you know, what's the, what's the cost going to be relative to the time it's going to take to do it. So you will get access to those and then you will talk to that person and you and he together will work out all those details. And this is another question. There's a, uh, again, a long list of regulations, federal regulations that impacts the industry uh, they're ever changing, even more so now, uh, depending on the administration. Currently, I guess the current one. And so, how often does the Responsible Ag Program look at the set of complex regulations and and try to update those to reflect the changes that are taking place at federal agencies? And the example right now is the new Risk Management Program regulations they just issued a few weeks ago that will be phased in. They also have a Clean Water Act, EPA Clean Water Act, hazardous materials, um, you know, worst case scenario reporting you're supposed to comply with potentially for retailers, things like that. How often does the program look at and update their checklist? The program is, is updated always on an annual basis just to make sure that anything that needs to be added has been added. They do. They just did this. It also is updated at any time that new regulations uh, are promulgated and uh, and they're out there. So they're not going to wait, you know, a year to do that. So, you know, the new RMP uh, regulations, they'll be looking at that now. Um, as I mentioned, you know, a few, couple, few years ago, we had the clearinghouse regulations. So they always do an annual update. And they will do updates as new regulations come to pass. And so I think you can be confident in the status of the checklist. That's good, that's good to know. And I know we've had regulators also visit the uh, the training facility, uh, whether that's been OSHA, Department of Homeland Security, and others um, tour that as well. Yeah. Uh, so, so if you have any questions, again, you uh, we'll, we'll be on here a few more moments. Um, to post those in the Q and A chat or the chat function, and we're glad to answer those. I'll put, I'll go back the screen if you didn't catch it. Um, oh, sorry, as a follow up with Tim's uh, information, uh, the Responsible Ag website. If you want to reach out to Tim afterwards if there's something you're thinking about, um, we're glad to do that as well. Here, here's a question that just came in said, could this program benefited the owner operator in Red Oak, Iowa, the open valve that led to a spill of 1500 tons uh, or equal to 265 gallons, six, 265,000 gallons of liquid nitrogen fertilizer, a solution, 32% uh, solution released into a draining ditch 
which entered the uh, the local river there, killing 700,000 fish. Um, I'll take that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it could benefit. You know, one of the things about the uh, facility inspections is you, you, you catch problems with um, containment and insufficient containment or um, you... Um, you know, uh, insufficient operation of that containment, like valves being left open. But where this program really benefits this kind of situation, it may not prevent the incident from happening, uh, but I can speak from experience uh, at uh, uh, very tragic accidents we've had at, at my facilities in the past and, and fires and that type of stuff. It's when the, the, the regulators show up on site and they realize that they're coming into a facility that is uh, part of the responsible aid program. Um, it, you, you get a little bit higher level of respect from uh, uh, from the, uh, the agency representative. I do remember one case uh, unfortunately, it was involved a fatality where the OSHA rep came in, and as soon as he walked in the door, he said, yeah, I, I know what your program is, Pete, and uh, um, he, he, he had benefited from being able to see uh, the responsible aid program uh, in practice even before uh, this, this incident occurred. So, so he came in with a completely different attitude. Uh, one that, you know, we did have a problem, but he knew how hard we were trying uh, to make sure we had uh, everything in place and done right. So it, it, it's not perfect. Um, these incidents are never fun to go through, um, but um, it, it, it's, when you have to go through them, it's a, it's a good, uh, it's a good platform to start from. Yeah. And I'd add to what Pete said that, um, you know, I know program in, in the world is going to close the valve for you, but I think that recently there was also a company that had a pretty substantial fire, uh, fertilizer warehouse fire, and, uh, it didn't prevent that fire from happening either because, it, it was a total accidental type of thing. But the people that run that business will tell you they were responsible ag certified. And the aftermath of these things is always the toughest part. And it helped them tremendously in the fact that they had all their ducks in a row and they could prove that with responsible ag and it helped them tremendously. And so I think that, uh, Yes, it, it would have a very big and positive impact upon it. Yeah. Well, I don't see any other questions in the uh, in the Q and A or chat function. Um, again, appreciate the great presentation and and people taking out time today. Uh, appreciate everything you do for the industry and those that are participating too on EHS issues to create that uh, culture of safety. Uh, and compliance and security around these facilities and their communities and employees. Um, and again, I know you all have all busy schedules, so taking time out today is very much appreciated. As I mentioned, it'll, this webinar is being recorded. It will be saved on the ARA website and accessible. If you have problems, just go to in, email info at aradc.org to get uh, your login as well. Uh, a reminder of some upcoming ARA events. We have the 2024 ARA Fall Board Meeting scheduled for September 11th through the 13th uh, in Memphis, Tennessee this year at the historic Peabody Hotel. If you've never been there, it's an awesome hotel. Um, this is meeting is open to all ARA members. We also have the 2024 ARA Conference and Expo scheduled for December 3rd through the 5th, uh, 2024 in Houston, Texas with the theme Powering Ag Retail's Next Frontier. Uh, registration will open up early this summer. Um, again, thank you everybody for participating and thanks Tim and Pete for all you do for the industry and uh, look forward to the next time we can have a more maybe in-depth webinar or even a panel discussion with, with member participants. So everybody take care and have a great and safe afternoon. Thank you. Sounds good.